factors that affect population size. First, I want to define carrying capacity. It's the maximum population that a particular environment can sustain. So, for example, if you have the number of individuals here and time here, if the population starts out very small, it's going to look like this, and it's going to increase over time, and then at some point the population should sort of level off. And so this would be your carrying capacity. This is something called overshooting your carrying capacity, and you can overshoot your carrying capacity for a little bit, but at that, after a while, um, the population will crash. So here's an example of that. So this is a reindeer population, um, I don't know, somewhere. And so if you, scientists have estimated that the carrying capacity is here, um, somewhere around, I don't know, um, 300 organisms or so. And so the reindeer population increased, and then at one point they really, really, really overshot their carrying capacity. And so you get what's called a population crash when the population goes very, very, very low. And sometimes what will happen is they'll degrade their environment. So while you have way too many for the environment, they'll actually kill off the things that they eat. So the trees will all die in the area. You know, they'll have stripped all the bark off of the trees. Or, well, it's reindeer, so maybe they eat all the lichen, I don't know. Um, and then you have less food, and so you can actually drop your carrying capacity to a lower number at that point. So if carrying capacity is exceeded, the population may degrade or destroy the environment and actually decrease the carrying capacity so your numbers would be lower. So what determines population um, increases or decreases? So really we're looking at a few things, birth rate, death rate, and who moves in or out of the area. And so this looks like people, but you can apply this to any type of organism. So the first thing is migration. So migration means um, moving around. So it includes both immigration, which means moving into an area, or emigration, which means moving out. And so most of you probably have heard the word immigration because it can be a political thing and we'll talk, um, you know, uh, politicians will talk about illegal immigrants, which means too many people from different countries that would be in your country. Um, and so that means moving in. And so it could be um, how many deer have moved into the area, or you could look at, um, you know, how many how many muskrats have moved into the area. Emigration would be moving out. So think I in, and E for exit. And then the next thing is birth and death rates. So if you have lots being born but lots dying, you're going to keep a, a pretty stable population. But if a lot are being born and um, not too many are dying, then the population will increase. So the birth and death rate can be affected by a number of things, as well as migration. Food and water, if you have plenty of food and water, then you will probably have more births, less death, and more immigration. If you have lots of competition for resources, organisms may leave or may die, or fewer will be born because the moms can't um, have enough food to carry the offspring long enough. Um, you could have a lack of space. You could have parasitism and disease. So that's density dependent, which means if you have more organisms of the same species around, they're more likely to pass parasites and diseases to each other. And then predation. So again, that's a little bit density dependent too, because if you have lots of, let's say, frogs in an area, you'll probably have more muskrats in that area. Um, waste accumulation, the more organisms you have, the more waste is produced. You'd probably have more organisms leaving or emigrating, and not so many being born and more dying. Stress and overcrowding tends to happen when you have too many organi organisms around, too. And then you have something that's called independent population density um, um, factors. So weather would be one of those. So if it got really, really, really cold one year, it wouldn't really matter whether you had a lot of deer or a few deer. All of the deer would be affected the same, and more of them would probably die. And so here's just um, a kind of a famous example of the um, snowshoe hare and the lynx. And if you look at this, um, let's see, the lynx is the pink one. And so every time you see the hare population increase, the lynx population kind of increases a little bit after that. And so the thought is that if you have more hares around, there'll be more lynx around. And then when the population of the hares declines a little bit after that, the population of the lynx will decline too because they won't have so much food. So maybe these two are tied together. Maybe they're not, but it suggests that they are. So predator populations decrease just after po prey populations decrease sometimes because of a lack of food. And um, I can't do population stuff without talking about people. And so this is um, a graph of the population of the planet. And so, let's see. So here are billions of people. So you can see the number of people on the planet was pretty um, stable for 
thousands and thousands and thousands of years. Um, and then we, and so I remember being in, I don't know if it was high school or college, and there were something like four billion people around or four and a half billion or something around. And what's the number today? Around seven billion, I think. So um, yeah, we're increasing at a, a pretty scary and fast rate, kind of like um, bacteria in a Petri dish. <laughs> With that happy note, um, have good evening.